three, two, one, zero. Getting into space is an expensive, dangerous, highly complicated business where hundreds of thousands of precision made parts all have to work together perfectly. If they don't, But as the race back to space hots up, commercial ventures are looking for simpler, cheaper, quicker alternatives to building spacecraft. And here in LA, I found a startup trying to solve all of those problems in the unlikeliest of ways, by 3D printing rockets. This is relativity space. Existing rocket bits are not 3D printed. What is the advantage of 3D printing? A lot of it, from our perspective, is flexibility. Then the traditionally factories are made of tons of fixed tooling. Then very expensive, very hard to change, then where you have to retool a factory in order to make a new product or even change the product slightly. For us, we can change all of that in software. So it's digitizing the manufacturing process and providing that flexibility, where if you push new code to the printers and the hardware on the factory floor, you can actually make an entirely different product without changing anything in hardware. After a stint at SpaceX, Jordan formed Relativity Space with his friend and ex-Blue Origin engineer, Tim Ellis. The two 20-somethings realized that 3D printing could help in several ways. Because it builds up objects layer by layer, it can produce complicated structures out of just one part. Also, much of the manufacturing can be done autonomously, which leads to a rather remarkable aim. The team wants to send robots to Mars, which can then build rockets on the surface. And that means that the astronauts who eventually land there will have a way of getting home. It's both better, cheaper, faster. Uh, it's going to actually evolve more quickly than other technologies. And we'll launch factories to Mars to actually build things like housing and spare parts and infrastructure and eventually leading up to printing the first rockets. Why has no one done this before? No one's had a printer big enough to print um, something that big. Then, and a lot of the challenge we had uh, as a company was making printers big enough to make, uh, to make entire rockets within them. This is what the printing process looks like close up. A robot arm weaves backwards and forwards to lay down a thick layer of special high strength aluminium alloy. So this is it, the world's largest metal 3D printer. It's currently printing the top of the first stage of a rocket, so the first bit that burns its fuel and is then jettisoned. This is the top of that. And if you look really closely, you can see that it's very slowly rotating. It takes about an hour to go all the way around at the moment. And that means that the robot arm, with all the hot stuff and the liquid metal stuff, can stay relatively still as it weaves each layer. And that means you get a lot more precision. The whole thing will take about 10 to 12 days to print. I can wait. I don't know about you. And why have one giant 3D printer when you can have several running in parallel? They're basically off-the-shelf robot arms, all arc-welding different rocket stages that, when put together, can stand 30 metres high. In its first five years, Relativity Space has already secured contracts with NASA and others. And next year, it hopes to make its first launch from Cape Canaveral in Florida after becoming only the fourth commercial company to secure a launch there, alongside the United Launch Alliance, Blue Origin and its LA compatriots, SpaceX. And sometime after that, Mars beckons. And the promise that anyone who journeys to the Red Planet is not making a one-way trip after all. <laughs>